good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome you to uh, today's session um, uh, in the transitions towards a new world order in uh, new learning. And I am really, really delighted that a very good colleague uh, of mine, Amin Sharifi Isalu, is uh, going to give the um, the the talk today uh, and uh, hopefully lead to some interesting conversations with all of you. I know Amin for uh, a long number of years now. Um, he arrived in Ireland uh, to seek asylum um, many years ago, and he ended up um, doing an undergraduate degree in my previous department at the university, Department of, of uh, Government and Politics. And uh, he was a huge breath of fresh air in the program, an outstanding scholar, but he also brought huge lived experience uh, from his previous unfortunate uh, um, situation where he uh, lived under an extremely intolerable uh, regime. Um, and um, in a sense, I suppose, um, Amin had to begin again his whole career, his whole life uh, in Ireland. And he has very successfully done that. He uh, did his undergraduate degree, as I said, uh, in, in that department, but he went on to do a master's and a PhD. And now he's an academic in UCC. But I think what he brings today is a high level of authenticity because um, when he talks about uh, racism, he's talking about somebody who has experienced uh, racism and intolerance uh, in many places in the world. So I think what he has to say uh, will resonate uh, very well with you. And I, I'm really thrilled that uh, Amin has made himself available to do this because he is, he is really a wonderful scholar, uh, but also a wonderful person. And I'm, I'm really pleased that, that he is here with us today. So on that note, Amin, I'd like to pass over to you and you can take it from here and then we can have some conversations uh, when your uh, presentation is finished. Uh, thank you, Seamus, and uh, thank you all organizers of uh, EUSEN. I'm delighted uh, to be here and to join you today uh, to talk about the rise of far right uh, political parties. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, for joining me here today uh, to discuss about this uh, important topic. Uh, if you give me a few seconds, I will be able to share my PowerPoint with you. You have my PowerPoint now. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yes, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, my name is Amin Sharifi Solo, as uh, Shame is introduced, and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Sociology and Criminology uh, at University College Cork. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, spreading racism, the rise of uh, far right political parties, uh, and racism in EU. And at the end, of course, we will have discussions and we will talk about the topic more. I will try to uh, summarize. Uh, it is my uh, uh, paper, working paper. Uh, I, I, after summarizing it, we will discuss further and we will expand the topic. Uh, the, map you are seeing at the moment on the screen is related to the rise of uh, nationalism in Europe and it's showing the percentage of votes won by a nationalist party in most recent uh, uh, national election. Uh, in many countries nationalists uh, got higher scores in European Parliament elections than uh, opinion polls I cannot uh, move it down, sort it down, but, but if you, you know, it is not going to happen, but please, if uh, you upload the, the 
a PowerPoint. And if you see this slide, if you click on it and solve down, you will see other countries. But as you can see, Hungary, uh, Austria, uh, We can hear you. I mean, excuse me. Yes. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, will I go back? <laughs> will I go back? What I think it's me? okay. Uh, it's okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, I was trying just to, to show you a map, probably I clicked on mute, excuse me for that. Uh, and you can see countries, yeah, it's just, just showing you the map uh, to have a clue about the rise of uh, uh, nationalism in Europe. Uh, and you can see Hungary, it is, it is the, the percentage here and, and Austria and Switzerland. But before, uh, talking uh, about uh, far-right political parties uh, in Europe, uh, just, uh, I, I would like to uh, talk about uh, development studies. Development studies tends to operate within an uh, accepted uh, uh, norm of the development discourse, whereas development education does not. And this is very, very important because the uh, development education as a uh, pedagogical approach not only encourages critical reflection and uh, makes an important contribution to higher education, but it also helps to look at the world through different lenses and to make connections between local and uh, global problems. Many disciplines uh, such as human rights, migration, health, education, environment, and, and even engineering are global and can only be effectively taught by uh, recognizing the impact of uh, glo globalization and uh, global issues uh, to the subject area. As uh, Schultz in 2010, uh, uh, explained uh, and noted uh, using global uh, citizenship as a platform to resist, resist uh, institutional structures can provide educators uh, with discursive and pedagogical space to engage the immensely complex issues related to uh, global knowledge and learning. Uh, one of our contemporary complex issue is uh, racism. A few years ago, I could understand that racism is a serious issue in Cork secondary schools. I decided to do a research on racism in secondary schools, but uh, encountering barriers such as not having funding and, and uh, uh, ethical concerns led me to start my, uh, my research by conducting online content on online uh, focusing on the far-right political party. In this way, I tried to show how far-right political parties use images, uh, signs, symbols, and uh, rhetoric to form the public sphere. Uh, before talking about the interdisciplinary uh, theories and uh, methodology let me to provide a brief uh, historical background. The anti-racism movements uh, are always uh, confronted by the political actors who are a member uh, of the far-right political party. Indeed, uh, these political actors are now governing a state or they are active in political uh, political arena to form the public sphere. Far right uh, parties have participated in coalition uh, governments in uh, Austria, uh, Croatia, um, uh, Estonia, uh, Finland, Italy, Latvia, uh, the Netherlands, Poland, Serbia, Slovakia and Switzerland, and they, they have supported 
minority governments in Bulgaria, uh, Denmark, the Netherlands, and uh, Norway. They are, influ in, they are influential in a variety of other countries, notably from uh, Belgium and uh, Hungary. The uh, reemergence of the far right has caused alarm among segments of the political establishment, uh, media, and uh, also academia. Despite this, far right parties remain a, a, a marginal electoral force in most European uh, countries. It is visible from Germany where the uh, AFD had become the biggest opposition party and from Spain where Vox uh, has become the third largest force in parliament. Uh, in part, uh, voters are uh, frustrated with the political establishment, uh, but they also have concerns about globalization, uh, immigration, a, a dilution uh, of national identity and the uh, European Union, which are uh, motors and slogans uh, of far-right parties. Uh, in, in the European Parliament, nine far-right political parties, far-right political parties have formed a new bloc called Identity and Democracy, or ID. And they became very powerful. A Farage uh, in the UK, Le Pen in France, Wilders in Netherlands, uh, Orban in Hungary, Trump in the US, all of them, uh, they invoke the racialized other as a treat to our way of life, while blaming Ellis for ignoring or even indulging the street. Far-right populism uh, further picks an enemy figure uh, on whom real insecurities may be projected. The other, the Muslim, the Jew, uh, the block of uh, African, or so on. Uh, the general called this scapegoating uh, mechanism indeed. Uh, if you look at neo-fascist golden Dawn in Greece, the anti-EU and anti-Islam new party, AFD in Germany, the UKIP in the UK, the PVV in the Netherlands, uh, it seems that the core nationalistic and uh, xenophobic uh, elements are uh, strikingly similar. The uh, global financial crisis and the unequal burden caused by uh, neoliberal uh, uh, austerity measures in, in response to it undoubtedly uh, underlie uh, the widespread of nationalist and uh, populist reactions. The uh, previously banned or blamed extremist views of far right parties and the, the racist programs have entered the core of uh, society. This populism as the uh, right of the native and self-proclaimed uh, indigenous uh, Christian Europe, for example, uh, takes discourse and action onto the streets, uh, streets uh, fighting extremist fundamentalist Islam and claiming a safe uh, or to save, sorry, claiming to save uh, our women, particularly if sexual violence against women is seen uh, to be exercised by non-white and non-Christian men. There are new puzzling uh, paradoxes uh, uh, to be noticed as the uh, conservative gender regime uh, of uh, far-right party is not the rule any longer. 
And some parties such as uh, the Dutch party are for freedom, PVV, as I mentioned, play the gay friendly and feminist uh, progressive card. Increase, increasingly, it, it has become difficult to draw the line exactly between center right and far right political parties as anti-immigration, anti-Muslim, and anti-EU rhetoric are intertwined in populist views and seem to signify common ground of, of mainstream uh, national or nationalistic uh, politics. So, okay, just I will show you uh, images uh, but before uh, showing images, uh, I, I would like just uh, to talk about theories I'm using uh, to uh, complete my, my research. Theories I'm using liminality and schismogenesis. Schismogenesis, uh, liminality mean being between and between, and schismogenesis uh, means creation of division or conflict. And as I mentioned, I'm using the content analysis methodology uh, to complete my work. Uh, the term liminality is very important because if you uh, travel to Ireland in, in New Grange, uh, which is a historical place in Ireland, uh, 5,200 year old uh, passage uh, tomb located in the uh, Boyan Valley in Contemid, if you enter inside, you can see uh, that people, they are going inside. Immediately there, you can see stone, this kind of stone. Then you can see spirals on the stone. Those stones are very important for archaeologists, but also uh, very important for anthropologists and sociologists. So this spirals on the stones, indeed, they are showing our uh, social identities and our social uh, life. And being in liminality, if it is for a short time, that is fine. All of us, we have liminality, for example, uh, a wedding. From that time, you are entering a wedding. Uh, I mean, the person who wants to marry it or, or a, a graduation ceremony. From that time, they are entering the ceremony or celebration. They are in liminality until uh, finishing the ceremony. The first identity, for example, is undergraduate. After finishing the liminality, the person is going to be a postgraduate. Uh, and th that, that is normal in our life and happens when we are going to baptize uh, and uh, we are going to have wedding and so on. But if it will be, be prolonged uh, or uh, permanent, then liminality can be dangerous, can cause social isolation, fear, dependency, uncertainty, emotional disturbance, uh, pathological mental health consequences. Okay, it, it, when it is liminal time, same as the economic crisis, uh, the pandemic and so on, the political actors or fanatic uh, religious leaders, they can uh, use symbols, images, signs, and so on to form the public sphere. Uh, it, that, that is the problem because uh, when uh, people they are in, uh, in a liminal time or in liminality, then uh, the, it is very easy to uh, manipulate them or to uh, uh, lead them to a wrong uh, direction. This image you can see here, it, it was in Madrid in the railway station. What they did, they used, uh, uh, the, if you see the black and white image uh, from the uh, Second World War, from uh, the Hitler time, and they compare it with, with uh, the contemporary issues. Indeed, it is not a issue. If you see the text here, you can see just uh, they, they, they are trying to use uh, uh, wrong information to 
from the public sphere. And uh, the right, the far right political party called Vox in, in Spain uh, used copies of Nazi's uh, propaganda techniques here and, uh, and just showing that uh, uh, how uh, it is important uh, to, to compare it with, with uh, the immigrants, immigrant children particularly at the time. Uh, it is Nazi propaganda comparing the cost of an ill person with the cost of a healthy family. And at the same time, you can see uh, just uh, I'm trying to show you here 4,700 euros comparing with uh, 200, uh, 426 euros for people who they are retired. But indeed, if you study, uh, you, you will understand that it is wrong information they are giving as children uh, are minors, not only immigrant children, minors in Spain, they got such a money uh, as I, uh, I showed here, it should be noted that this 4,208 uh, money is handed to the organization responsible for the care of this minor, minor, all minors uh, in Spain. And then among the immigrant minors, 269 have arrived in Spain unaccompanied, accompanied, sorry, by, uh, by an uh, adult, uh, amounting to 7.2% of the total. So all the information they are providing here, they are wrong, but, but in this way they can uh, mani manipulate people and get more uh, followers. And the other image I'm showing here, it is uh, from uh, Daily Mail. You can see it is not only about the message they are saying, uh, migrants, uh, how many more can we take? It is one message and the other message is the page itself. If you see it, uh, most of the space here is taken, is taken by the message, but at the right hand, uh, they are showing a, a smiley and happy couple or uh, TV actors. Uh, then uh, the, that means that if we will not have uh, migrants, then uh, we can use the rest of the spaces for uh, our, our images, which are uh, happy images, and, and we can be happier than now. And it is continued. They are usually using such a uh, technique to form the public sphere, in, in fact, showing images uh, and, and, and manipulating uh, uh, readers or people who they are seeing the uh, first page or front page uh, uh, to uh, uh, to manipulate them just and to form uh, the public sphere in general. Uh, again, here the same refugees uh, on benefits, but at the same time on the right hand, uh, you can see that uh, uh, a couple uh, they are very happy, and on the top they won some lotto or something, but the message is showing that still the most page is uh, about, about refugees. If we haven't refugees, then uh, the space you can see, we can use for uh, happy news and uh, for our people who they are uh, happy. So we will be happier if we will not have refugees and immigrants. And the same here, you can see send an army to halt migrant invasion, you are calling Muslim invasion, migrant invasion, and uh, they, they are showing people that it is a kind of war, but at the same time, you can see that uh, they have two images on the right and left to show happy people, happy uh, female, and if, we will not have, again, migrants and, and refugees. Uh, we will have more space for uh, happy news. And the same is continuing. You can see, again, Daily Express here showing Queen Helen on the right hand, very small, but, but the immigrants, you know, uh, they are bringing 
more crime. But the problem is that they are uh, generating the uh, the, the uh, news, and they are they are. It is a kind of not only stereotype, but also also it is generalizing uh, something. Okay, how many of immigrants uh, bring crime? How many of immigrants they are criminals? Of course, not all immigrants, but the news is about immigrants, all immigrants that we, immigrants bring more crime. So they are generalizing everything uh, to form the uh, public sphere. And here, 8 million uh, foreigners living in Britain. Okay, Britain here is very important because immediately they have an image here. You don't know even, or we don't know even that person is a criminal by accident, they are stating what happened. Uh, but even if that person is the, the criminal person, then, then, then he's one person, not 8 million foreigners. Just there are eight, 8 million foreigners living in Britain. And immediately you have image there, a criminal. That means they are uh, criminals, the rest of people. But in this way, they are generalizing uh, everything and, and forming the public sphere. And we have in Switzerland, uh, the uh, billboard here, you can see on the street, they put uh, the, the Switzerland has narrowly voted in favor of uh, banning uh, face covering in public, including the uh, burqa uh, or uh, niqab worn by Muslim women. You can see how they are showing uh, angry, uh, angry face, and then uh, they are calling uh, Muslim female the extremist. And if you study further, you can understand that the far right political parties themselves they are extremists. And the the uh, not only my study but also the previous studies they are showing that they are extremists, and they are trying to create conflict, schismogenic process. And in this way, we are living our society in a prolonged liminality, or maybe it will lead to a permanent liminality. And about social media, the, there are plenty of uh, uh, researches, but uh, uh, as you know, uh, as social media have uh, come to uh, dom dominate social polit political land landscape, uh, th th there are plenty of uh, uh, problems at the moment in whole the world, and uh, not only about uh, the uh, Facebook and, and uh, uh, Reddit, YouTube, all of them they give rise to a network of uh, rationally right racist influences, uh, 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 but also uh, Twitter, for example, uh, we can see that uh, Twitter is producing uh, racism in our societies. And I, I know that people they are using for good things too, to share photos with, for example, they're sharing their photos in Facebook with their family members, friends, but, but uh, at the same time, uh, Facebook, uh, Reddit in, in, in the US, uh, YouTube and uh, Twitter are used as a platform for uh, uh, far-right political parties to form the public sphere. And, uh, but I cannot click on anything here because it is not working and I'm afraid, afraid again, I will mute myself. <laughs> but, uh, but if you just, uh, if you have my PowerPoint, if you click on the link or copy and paste on the link and uh, click on the uh, green spots or green circle, then you will see the, the uh, false news uh, the far-right political party they are spreading to the other parts of the world. But the important point is that if you see Europe, the most false news is spread in Europe rather than the uh, other countries. And we have far-right pol political parties in Europe more than other parts of the world. And, and 
Uh, unfortunately, if and not all of them, they are important, but some of them, they are very important and very dangerous messages. And sometimes they are just uh, making uh, videos, false images, and, and they are circulating. For example, they were uh, the, taking, a, they were spreading a video online to show that a uh, few uh, immigrants they attack a person who was living in Prague and they are hitting and beating that person. But later on, uh, we, not myself, but other people who they were very good in, in uh, recognizing the uh, false videos, they could understand that it was opposite. In fact, a few people from Prague, they were hitting the immigrant, but the, the title was opposite. And in this way, they were just uh, manipulating people. Okay, the other images here, it is very important. You, it, it is used by uh, British First Party. And this lady you are seeing here with, uh, covered uh, uh, by the burqa. This lady it was a police in Afghanistan and killed by Taliban at that time, the first time Taliban uh, just took over uh, Afghanistan and was not allowing women or girls to go to school and to be educated. Uh, that time, this lady was police and was killed, killed by Taliban. She was against extremists indeed, but you can see that, that uh, British First Party is using this image and uh, showing terror attack level and so on for security uh, reason. It is now time to ban the burqa. And they use this image without any permission. And the picture was taken indeed by a Canadian lady called Lana Slezik and to show a uh, uh, police women in Afghanistan, how she sacrificed herself for uh, her society and for uh, peace. And, and uh, she was fighting even against the uh, Taliban. And, and uh, they didn't get any permission. Without her permission, they used this photo and they, they showed something else. That is the other problem we have. And they don't care about copyright, about the other things they are using images, uh, whatever they want, and they are just trying to form the public sphere to get uh, more uh, followers or more votes. Okay, in conclusion, unlike in the pre-civilized time, when uh, racial discrimination was widespread and over today, it is less ident identify uh, identifiable and Covered. If the, the rise of the far right political parties in EU will continue and they will receive more financial and political power, they will face a schismogenic process that controlling it will be extremely difficult in the future and may induce prolonged and permanent liminality. Uh, to prevent this, EU institution national governments and the media must use all opportunities to lead people in a right path rather than providing platform to the far right political party. They must show genuine care for the whole community without any discrimination and exclusion and must strengthen the sense of caring, sharing and gift giving. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Amin. Um, a lot to digest there. And uh, it is interesting uh, to see that um, sometimes in Europe, we take the high moral ground. When it comes to uh, far right political parties, we seem to be world leaders, which is uh, very, very uh, disappointing. Uh, for us, given 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 our history and, and so on. So um, thank you, I mean, so maybe we can start thank with you. any questions or, or comments. And I think there may be some in the chat already. I wasn't sure following it very well. But yeah, no, no, no questions yet. Uh, anybody like to ask a question or, or make a comment?
maybe me, Seamus. Yeah, um, absolutely, Christina. Just, nice to see you. Yeah, uh, hear, hear me at least. Um, hear you. Um, thank you for this excellent presentation and all this example giving all over Europe. Um, of course, unfortunately, you have uh, talked a lot about uh, mid Europe and especially Austria as well. And our, I just want to mention that our, the last maybe three, four years has been a big change also between uh, within the people who voted for the right wing. Because, um, I mean, this is something which is really important. I think it's all over Europe, not um, the people who vote for right wing must be really on the very right side. Yeah, this means that um, at, at the moment, our right wing party is very against any vaccination. And there are a lot of people, of course, here in Austria, which are against vaccination, but are not right. So it could be also some people who are uh, politically in the middle or even a bit left, but uh, because this is the only party who really um, uh, fights against vaccination. And, and, and this is a big problem because these right wing parties are very popular with popular themes. And um, sometimes people vote them because they are against something. And uh, we have to bear that in mind. So if there is 20% um, of uh, people who voted for the right wing, this mean all 20% 20, 20 are right. Um, it's just that I want to uh, mention. And um, but, um, again, I think the most important thing about right uh, wing parties is education. I mean, this is something we have to consider starting you know, in the second secondary school, even starting earlier, and and giving a lot of information about minorities, about refugees, about other bodily situations, it's really really important, and and to open minds. And and, and at the moment, um, we are struggling because people are closing their minds. Also, critical thinking is not uh, is not on the table right now. So uh, I think this all we have to consider when we talk about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christina. Anyone else like to comment or do you want to uh, respond, Amin? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yes, that is very important. It is somehow uh, related to imitation too. And uh, people, they imitate each other rather than doing a research and uh, uh, studying uh, what kind of political parties are uh, the far right political parties because because they are high, highlighting uh, a few things. I mean the uh, the far right political parties and they they are trying to form the public sphere. Of course, they have followers and uh, uh, those followers they are very active to uh, the uh, far right political parties. They could access the funding of. EU, and they could get seats uh, in, in the European Parliament. Getting a seat, that means, that means you can access uh, uh, the funding of EU too. In this way, they worked hard to uh, have the, the social media and they hired people who they were good in rhetoric or writing speeches or writing blogs and this kind of thing. And they try to target young people, okay, particularly the uh, uh, students in the secondary school and universities. They are very active. Even we have Identity Ireland in Ireland. They, they are a small group now, but they can be dangerous in the future. They can be a big group, same as the Freedom Party, for example, in the Netherlands. They were a few people. First, and now they, they are a big party, just a few years. Now they are, they are not in the parliament, but a few years they will be, they could be in uh, seats in, in, in the uh, uh, Netherlands parliament, and then they move to the uh, European uh, or EU parliament. So they, they, they are there, they are very active to form the public sphere, but at the same time, there are people, they are just, imitating other people. The imitation is very important. Imitation has two sides. One side is very good. We are learning from each other. 
okay, mathematics or whatever, you know, from le we are uh, learning from our parents or our society, schools or so on. But the bad side of, of imitation is that some people, they are following even a black flag, for example, <laughs> al-Baghdadi in, in the Middle East, uh, he was just uh, uh, showing, waving a black flag with la ilaha ila, there is no God except God, Allah, that is God. And then people, they were following, people who they were uh, religious. It, some of them, they were not even extremists, they were just uh, uh, religious people and they were fundamentalists, they were not dangerous, but they started to follow al-Baghdadi and they imitated each other. That means one uh, saw that a friend, a friend or a relative is following uh, al-Baghdadi and uh, he saw, or she started to follow al-Baghdadi too without knowing uh, who Al Baghdadi is and what he's saying. It, it, this, this happened, for example, after the 11th September, millions of Bibles copies were sold in the US. People just, they were imitating each other. The imitation is very important. And uh, René Girard, uh, who is the socialist in, in, in uh, France, he died a few years ago, but he talked about the scapegoating mechanism, imitation. Uh, uh, and and uh, the mimetic desire, mimetic desire of people. Okay, thank you, Amin. Uh, anybody else like to uh, make a comment? Yeah, Susan. Thank you so much. That was really interesting and um, just very thought provoking too. And and something you mentioned about um, when you showed the newspaper article and then the pictures next to the or the images next to the article. And I hadn't really thought about that almost subliminal thought. You know, we, we encourage our students and I work in higher education and we, you know, encourage our students to really read and critically think about what they're reading in the media. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I, I honestly hadn't thought about, say, the picture that's next to the article that's not, that you don't think is related. But in, in your presentation, you were sort of talking about them being related and the message it's sending. So I thought that was really um, thought provoking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very interesting. Um, the, other, the other side of it, I, I, you looked a lot at, at, at the, you know, the red tops as they're called, uh, but what about social media? Because I suppose fewer people are engaging with what we would have traditionally called mainstream media. And um, like, one thing that that's changed dramatically for mainstream media is they have less and less and less resources to uh, do, I suppose, high quality stories and uh, analysis and so on uh, that they might have done in the past. And they have less influence, uh, less people are reading them or watching them or viewing them. So um, what to what extent do you think uh, social media is is a, a vehicle, I suppose, for for um, driving this new right-wing agenda. Are you asking me? Yeah, I was asking because, you a minute. Okay, sorry, sorry, I sorry. thought you said a general question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about mass media, particularly the social media, it is not something new. I mean, when even we hadn't any social media, some academics, they talked about it. If you go to the Plato's time, Plato talked about sophists. Sophists were a group of people who they were trying to form the public and manipulate people, okay? For example, at the time they were saying, uh, the about, they were talking about uh, democracy, but they were using symbols of democracy and the name of democracy to form the public sphere. Uh, and, and the same thing, again, Habermas mentioned, okay, about the mass media and said, okay, the mass media can be dangerous for our democracy because people who they are, I'm calling them trickisters, okay, trickisters, uh, was used uh, uh, by other social scientists, but, but just I, I don't want to go to the details. We will not have enough time for uh, explaining those theories and concepts related to trickisters. Uh, but uh, 
I'm calling them trickisters. I mean, the political actors are all fanatic uh, religious leaders who they are uh, trying to form the public sphere to reach uh, their own aims and or pre-planned aims and goals. So uh, Habermas said that it is dangerous. Mass media can 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 uh, destroy our democracy in our society, and it is going to happen. Okay, we are saying we have democracy in some countries. I don't see at the moment to be honest to have democracy in <laughs> any country because if you translate all of you, you know the meaning of democracy: governing people by people for the people. But which country you can find such a thing? And in a state, uh, some, of the, some of the political actors, even the political religious leaders, they are trying to use uh, the, the name of democracy and, and to form the public sphere and to have a stage to, pe to perform. Okay, they are using the name of democracy to have a stage to perform. Indeed, uh, uh, what I am talking about is educating our children to be aware of such a performance and uh, uh, such a stage of the political uh, actors and the fanatic uh, religious leaders. So in this way, we can, as I mentioned, they are very active. We are not, to be honest, okay? The far right political parties or races, they are very active in the social media, newspaper, you so everywhere. Uh, we are active too, we, we have the organizations, they are active, but less than them. And we have to educate our children from at least second, the secondary school and to make them, uh, them aware about the, this kind of performances and stages. And in this way, they will, I hope that they will be not uh, manipulated by the far right political parties or the fanatic religious leaders or extremists. I mean, uh, would anybody else like to, to make a comment? I just want to say that I think we should start earlier. I think uh, not only in secondary school, primary school, or even in the kindergarten, uh, it is really, really important um, to see that we are a multicultural society. Uh, we are globalized and are, we are all global. Uh, unions and and i think therefore it's really i mean we we still could think local in in terms of uh, sustainability and things like that but as humans i have we have to really think globalized and um and and therefore we have to start very early uh and yes. not in, in secondary school really in kindergarten and and this is really really important yeah as parents Thank but you. also as teachers educators Yes, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think it's a very good point as well, uh, Christina. You know the extent to which um, we actually celebrate um, multiculturalism uh, because we don't really do it as much. Maybe and maybe this is the point you're making. I mean, we don't really celebrate uh, the benefits of multiculturalism that actively. Really, I mean, we do recognize. The value of it but but i'm not sure that that as societies we we fully we fully celebrate the the huge benefits that come to all of us through living in multicultural societies and uh, maybe there's you know, maybe this is one of the one of the things that we're 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 weak at in terms of 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 uh, shifting the agenda or trying to educate people uh may i just add something it's it's not only that we're not celebrating enough uh, the multicultural, it's also that we are missing out that when we're traveling, that we really have an easy access to all over the world and meet interesting people, discuss people. And then, I mean, we, we do miss our meetings, like the last one we had 2019 in Barcelona. Uh, and we know that this is something we really do miss and, and we're suffering to get uh, to see each other and to, to meet new people and to talk to each other but we, we, we really are aware of that now but um unless we didn't have an a pandemic we didn't know that it's so so um precious that we meet each other and 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 
have an easy access to travel and easy access to meet each other, whatever. And we really have to celebrate this as well. So not only that we are multicultural, but also that we could even, you know, get to the other pl planet, part of the planet as well, and 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 get a, a different feeling, something, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're uh, we're getting close to to uh, wrapping up time. So uh, would any others like to to make a comment or ask uh, a question? I see in in the uh, chat, uh, Yeet says uh, about social media as a double edged sword. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that is that is correct because we can use the, the social media media to educate our children or to have network connection. You know, it is very important to have social life too. Some people they are using it in right way at the moment. Okay, we are using Twitter when I, 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 I myself I am using uh, social media to connect with other communities with other people. Uh, but, but what uh, I'm arguing about is the use of the social media uh, to to form the public sphere to reach uh, a pre-planned aim and goal, which is wrong. We have a pre-planned aim and goal to it. Should be, it can be a, a right pre-planned uh, aim or goal, but what they are using it in a, a wrong way. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose it, uh, there's a, a message of positivity there. We, we, we don't just throw our hands in the air and say this is all out of control or this is all going in one direction. Uh, we have the, the power to, to influence it ourselves. That's true. Okay, so any, oh yeah, uh, Waid is giving us a thumbs up on that one. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Any, anybody else like to uh, add any comments in the chat or elsewhere? Okay, uh, I think we're, we're coming to coming to a, a conclusion uh, there, um, Amin. And thank you very, very, very much. Um, as I said at the beginning, um, you bring an authenticity to this discussion, you know, because you. you you certainly have uh, lived uh, and continue to live um, uh, through, I suppose, uh, a lot of a lot of challenges, and you have uh, admirably overcome so many as well. Um, so thank you, thank you very very much uh, for bringing us these insights, and I suppose giving us a, a more theoretical perspective on these things as well and uh, as Susan pointed out in her um, contribution also I suppose um, alerting us to maybe our own critical faculties in terms of uh, <laughs> seeing things that maybe we see every day but we don't we don't always notice um, um, and I, I saw some presentation yesterday about um, unconscious biases and how we our subconscious uh, leaps to many, many, many conclusions. And of course, uh, a lot of the, the kinds of things that are used here are exploiting that uh, scenario. So I think it's important that we, that we reflect uh, as well ourselves and I suppose help others to reflect. So um, thank you very much, Amin. And I hope that you'll thank be able you. to join us on Friday for the panel discussion as well. Yes. Yeah, that will be good, and then we can we yes. can have uh, we can uh, draw. I will be there. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, I really enjoyed the discussions, and uh, I appreciate that you took your time to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Thank you. And uh, tomorrow, uh, our discussion is uh, going to continue. At, uh, Annalisa, are you to, you're you're not to, you're tomorrow. Yeah, no. Oh no, it's Nicholas tomorrow. I'm getting my days mixed up. So it's Nicholas tomorrow and then uh, Annalisa on Thursday. Uh, do you want to speak a little bit about that, uh, Karma, before we wind up? Not really, uh, Seamus. It's uh, only to invite everybody who is here today to join us tomorrow on Thursday. And then, as you said, we'll have a panel on Friday with uh, uh, our guests. So everybody's welcome to join us. Okay, excellent. 
So um, on that note, I suppose we can wind up uh, for today and stay within the one hour allotted. So thank you all for attending. And again, thank you, Amin, for a very, very inspiring uh, contribution. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.